Finance Officer at Allahabad Bank. He has since excelled in various roles, including branch head in different urban settings, and has managed diverse portfolios in MSME, corporate, and export credit in major Indian cities. Eminent speakers: Mr. Anand Mirani, strategic legal advisor, coach, corporate trainer, international business. Mr. Anand is the director and lead advisor at Simplus Exim Corporate Advisory LLP, where he offers strategic advice in international business to various organizations. His 20 plus years of experience span multiple domains such as international marketing, global procurement, and operations management, with exposure to industries like engineering, logistics, and pharmaceuticals. With over a decade as a strategic legal business advisor, he specializes in assisting manufacturers, exporters, importers, and merchant traders to grow and manage their international ventures effectively. Mr. Surender Bharadwaj, Product Manager, International Trade, ICICI Bank. Mr. Surender Bharadwaj is currently serving as the subject matter expert in the trade division at ICICI Bank. In this capacity, he is responsible for managing and overseeing service and compliance parameters across various zones, demonstrating his leadership and proficiency in the field of international trade and banking. His association with ICICI Bank extends for over 12 years, showcasing a deep-rooted commitment and expertise in the financial sector. Prior to his tenure at ICICI. He held significant positions at Canara Bank and the erstwhile Bank of Rajasthan. In his illustrious career of 35 years, Mr. Bharadwaj has developed a specialized focus on international trade operations. His areas of expertise encompass a wide range, including exports, imports, compliance, and effective communication with regulators. Mr. Ashok Mishra, Financial Management Consultant. X D G M B O I. Mr. Ashok Mishra is an accomplished banking professional, specializing in credit, consultancy, and HR with a 35-year tenure in a globally recognized bank. Renowned as a top faculty member, he has also contributed as a visiting lecturer at N I B M R B I. An IIM, his leadership in training development includes heading three Apex training institutes. Mishra's career at the Bank of India saw him in various managerial roles, from branch operations to corporate headquarters, showcasing his problem-solving and solution-focused skills. Good evening, friends. I am your host K K Gupta here. I am a director of Association for Financial Advisor of India, who is promoted by the eminent. professionals with the aims to impart the knowledge to the members and also to create a awareness about the financial management in the system to be as a research in india we are a merchant banker investment banker and also providing the services in respect of debt syndications and uh, conducting the economic or viability study Beside giving training to the bankers and PSU banks, so we are thankful to all the participants. We have got a registration of eight hundred forty-two, and under the banner of the association, we are having this thirty-second webinar. We conducted various webinar in respect of infrastructure, in respect of the SME sector, restructuring, financial management. Besides, under the Research in India banner, this is our two hundred nine webinar under the Research in India banners. So this webinar having its own importance. When we are talking about the banner subject matter, it is enabling cross border e commerce business. I think this is the most important aspect. What is the e commerce? When we are talking about the Indian export or e commerce cross border. So as per information available with us, a up to year twenty, in the year nineteen twenty twenty, there was 
एक्सपोर्ट ई कॉमर्स बिजनेस क्रॉस बॉर्डर सेलिंग गुड्स और सर्विसेस ऑनलाइन टू ए कस्टमर इन अदर कंट्रीज it can be very lucrative business opportunity for e business to expand their market reach diversify their customer base and increase their revenues it also comes with various challenges such as legal culture logistical and technical issue how do the e-commerce cope with the challenges and see the opportunity of cross border e-commerce so there are tips are there whether we are trying to understand the target market first of important aspect is to understand the target market choose the right platform optimize the user experiences leverage the power of social medias adapt the changing trend i will not touch much we will discuss in detail we are with us <coughs> from icic bank who is also our co partner under this webinar so with us mr surinder bhartwad who is a product manager international trade icic bank so i request mr bhartwad to be opener batsman for this program tell about the icic bank what bank is supporting the e-commerce and what the government supports impact of the quality i think this is a major aspect quality is the major things so how the standardization of certification has helped to us i'm sorry that we have now our guest of honor joined with us mr ssp roy he is general manager indian bank welcome you sir our guest of honor sri ssp roy general manager indian bank welcome you sir please unmute kar lijiye jara ek video apna on kar lijiye sir request you mr roy roy sir hello roy sir to i request uh, let me show surender bhardwaj please give your uh, remarks about the icic bank how it is helpful uh, to the entrepreneurs because more than 822 registration with us and all the entrepreneurs all our members even the banker are listening to you so mr surinder bhartwaj please give your thank thoughts you. thank you so much sir uh, i'll just try to pro uh, present a proposition of icic bank with regarding to particularly uh, e-commerce business that we talk about because lot of support is required to uh, this community uh so uh as we all know foreign trade policy has given a lot of boost particular to e-commerce exports in this uh, policy declared first and foremost is that the exports through courier service the value has increased from 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs which has helped uh, the e-commerce segment to increase their uh, exports in this the government support is necessary and enablement of it systems has been done in department of commerce post cbic which will, will be completed in the next 6 months guidelines are being formulated in consultation with other ministries to facilitate further exports under e-commerce and there is special outreach and training activities for small e-commerce exporters also as for the government in 2025 the global uh, cross border e-commerce export will touch approximately dollar 2 trillion as per the estimate and india's e-commerce ex export is potentially is in the range of dollar 200 to 300 billion annually by 2030 so that's a huge number that we are expecting uh, in, due to this increase in numbers banks also have to gear up themselves not only to support this community because ultimately they will be the major revenue providers to the country so what normally e-commerce exporters or normal exporters face challenges how to uh, when to reach the branch 
or whom to contact at the branch there are transaction costs that affects their profitability they also need some special advisory services swift copies and particularly the pre and post transaction compliance support which they require from the banking branch normally whenever an export happens the export bill has to be regularized against the payment received payment is received export has happened documents are not traceable there are pending bills which are not regularized there are recon issues and for the e-commerce customer since the amount of export or the invoice value is very small and lot of bulk exports happen 500 to 600 to 1000 shipments per month there is uh, a need for giving their regulation of shipping bills in bulk so as a icic bank we have an advantage with regarding to e-commerce solutions for the exporter community we provide them export bill regulation online facility wherein they need not depend on the branch we provide a free and automated issues of foreign inward remittance statement which is mandatory to get the uh, payment details generated in the edpm software then particularly courier and postal shipping bill regulation support we are giving and we also give them bulk regularization process wherein they are able to regularize their shipping bills say more than 1000 2000 shipping bills at a time so this is a very important aspect with the group normally the export relation regulation journey happens the payment is received the bank intimates the exporter the funds are credited to the exporter's account and the entry gets updated in the adpms software which is the rbi software for monitoring the payments as well as the exports once the payment comes shipment has to happen shipping bill gets generated either through courier or through customs and this shipping bills also start getting reflected in the adpms software and it is an exporter's obligation to get the shipping bill and the payment details where regularized in the system by submitting the documents to the bank so this is a simple journey of export bill regularization from the exporter's perspective so we have as icic bank has provided a software called trade online this software supports the exporter community to match their payments as well as the shipping bill details on the system itself and regularize them by matching these details they need not go to the branch for submitting the documents they can themselves initiate the transactions or the regulation process at any point of time from anywhere they are sitting so this system will help them to uh, bulk regularize the process also they can also do ad code transfer request if they are using some other banks ad code transfer and the regulation outstandings also can be checked through this system so all the issues of untraceable documents pending bill issues recon issue gets eliminated by using this software icic bank has come in support of the exporter community with regarding to this similarly we also have a paperless processing of bulk regulation with flat regulation charges so the charges are always an issue particularly being small shipment this issue is there so we have an integration with a dhl courier company where the documents are generated digitally from digital as per the request of the exporter so no need of submitting the physical documents to the bank you need to only submit the details of the payment and the request letter we get the documents completed and regularize your shipping bills in time and your bank relation certificate gets updated in the dgft certificate uh, dgft side similarly normally when the payments are coming through some other banks or through opgsp system there is a requirement of generation of foreign inward remittance certificate uh, statement if you are a customer of icic bank we have an automated issuance post the transaction so if the opgsp account is maintained with icic bank and if you have an account with icic bank your firs get get generated automatically as soon as the payment is created to your account and that too free of cost so we also have arrangement with pioneer with uh, payu etc from where the payments are coming and getting created into your account directly and the irm gets created automatically in the system and the bill gets regularized and you get a bank relation certificate issued so the normal time taking process of 15 to 20 days gets avoided if you are having an account with icic bank wherein the opgsp is maintaining an account so trade online software that i am talking about it it avoids too many bank visits it avoids submission of physical documents it even eliminates the banking service timing restrictions from you can initiate your transaction at any point of time round the clock we have almost uh, handled 97 to 98% of the trade transaction through this trade online software all inward remittances bill regulation purpose bank guarantee issuance import payments import bill regulation letter of credit issuance 
or even the non import payments can be initiated through this process there is no setup cost for this software once you open an account immediately when the internet banking your facilities are activated in an account the trade online facility or facility also gets activated so there is it, you can transact paperless you can reduce the turnaround time for a processing of transaction and it is available round the clock and we also are having a single view dashboard wherein you can view your transactions pending transactions which are not been active uh, actioned upon by you all your pendencies gets reflected all shipping bills which have been generated but payment not received all payment received but export not done or shipping bill submitted to the bank but not again. every data is available for you to monitor no need to wait for the branch or the team to send you the data you can download even your advices swift copies you can monitor your due dates and you can track your compliance so it's a basically complete uh, dashboard for your trade related transactions so it's a beauty that the uh, such a revolution has come and icici bank has provided various digital solutions with regarding trade online software that we talked about we also have a fx online software where you can book your own rates trade one new dashboards i spoke about the turnaround time is very less with regarding to settlement of the payments as well as the bank guarantee issuance or outward remittances and icici bank has also made setup uh, arrangements with various agencies to provide all your trade related solutions so in in the trade uh, mr software we have a uh, setup with india filings where you can get started with regard to y code etc if you want to have uh, detailed know abouts of your buyers foreign buyers and seller you can uh, check the database through the dollar business if you want to uh, uh, check the credibility of the overseas uh, buyers and uh, sellers we have a arrangement with dun and brad street where you can get the credit report we also have logistic arrangements you can avail insurance through icic lombard and we also have arrangement with india trade portal which is the knowledge hub everybody knows about it you can find the import export data hs code etc etc so there are certain discounts also certain uh, additional facilities also with regarding to icic bank customer when they are visiting this platforms to uh, update their needs for international trade apart from that the instabit software of icic bank is a revolution in the banking industry you name the product and it is available on this simple app that we, we call it as you are carrying the branch in your pocket any lending solutions merchant solutions trade and forex payment collection name the banking product that you require this app is able to give you so this is one of the best thing that the bank has done in the icic bank software uh, industry we have a large dedicated team with regarding to handling of your transactions we have a large dedicated team of treasury team to give you uh, updates on currency movements markets etc we have a product team wherever your complex transactions gets handled and services are provided even for your capital investment accounts also we have a separate account which gives you advisory with regarding to handling of the transaction till uh, submission of the returns to reserve bank of india so icic bank as you all know uh, it's a well known uh, bank uh, with regarding to and has won various awards and accolades in the industry bank of the year best trade, uh, trade finance platform initiative best retail bank in india and we always are there to support and particularly the e-commerce business that we are talking about here in this particular webinar the bulk regulation process has provided a revolution with regarding to regulation of shipping bills which will support you clear your pendencies and uh, in compliance of rbi as well as fema guidelines so uh, very nice suridar ji i think you have covered icic bank we are talking about the paperless banking yes sir we are talking about timelines and trade online single view dashboards and you also mentioned the branch in the pocket yes sir i think uh, that is a important aspect of icic bank is coming so we try to touch the pain now the point the is how yes, the government support and resources are available for our inter entrepreneurs and yes sir uh, say about the government support for the e-commerce the particularly government support that is expected that what we saw in this uh, particularly uh, dgft policy government is initiating various measures with regarding to uh, support the e-commerce business uh, that i said that increasing the value of shipment from 5 lakh to 10 lakhs is also a government support okay as far as infrastructure is concerned yes there is a lot of works still need to be done government is focused on that and the documentation part particularly what an exporter feels is after he has done an export he needs to regularize the pain area is there 
the payment, the export happens, the payment comes. But what after that? The financial institution, the regulator, the uh, customs and all, there is a follow-up of various uh, completion of the transaction. It is there where we are getting, even the banking industry is working on this to get the things digital, to provide digital support to the exporters. The ECCS platform that the bank has developed as of now, they can always check their bill of entries or shipping bills, whether they have flown to the IDPMS software or to the uh, ICE gate or not. So this is a very uh, good support. And digital support is what that matters as of now. So government is working on this, like a uh, lot of things are there. The postal department, various post offices are being uh, uh, developed to handle the e-commerce business, business properly, with proper documentation, etc. The dark area schemes are being set up by the government to uh, support the e-commerce industry. So I think the, particularly, I first time in the banking industry, I saw this, uh, it's such a huge chapter on the DGFT policy on the e-commerce exporters. And I think they should help the community a lot. Okay, Manbhaji, I will come back to you. Now I am coming, uh, our guest of honor is available with us, SSP Roy. Roy Sahib, if you, un you can unmute it and uh, please put your for on this uh, video. Mr. Roy. Roy, sir. Raja Ji, you will unmute Roy Sahib. You will unmute it now. Sure, sir, I will do that. You ask him. Rai sir, who is our guest of honor, Mr. S.P. Rai. He is the general manager Indian Bank. He is a very dynamic man, having a controlling the biggest zone of the bank, Indian Bank. Hello, Rai sir. I think uh, we, we could not connect you. So, let me tell he tie he is coming. Now I am coming to Mr. Adam Bariani, sir. Yes. Right, sir, is not coming. Right, sir, is coming. Right, sir. So, you're welcome, mm -hmm. sir. I, I think we are, your profile we have already shown to our participants. And my request to you about the export. Who is the leading in the country? Who is the leading in the world? And what <laughs> is the plus point with these people? Wait. What is number one? When we are talking about our export under the e-commerce, how it is in, in, anticipated that it should be 188 billion by 2025. Right. If other country are talking about the USA, you are talking about the uh, just like I talked about, I have seen that Alibaba in China selling good all over the world. Yes. And we're talking about the Amazon. Yeah. In so, North America. Yes. Right. To Europe. So what is the India? What we are doing it? Have any view on that aspect, sir, Mr. Anand? You are an expert in the export uh, financing or something like that. <laughs> That's yes. why I'm asking this question. Yes. Yeah, major, major aspect of that. Please, Anand, sir. So, thank you very much. Thank you, AFI and Rupaji for, you know, organizing such an event. Specifically coming to the question that, uh, yes, we are uh, lagging behind the, you know, converting this uh, amazing opportunity of the e-commerce exports. But uh, I feel that we are not, you know, far uh, behind. If we consider this, you know, just few statistics that in 2017, $1.5 trillion economy of the e-commerce was there. And then in 2020, it is 4 trillion and it is estimated that by 2027, it is more than 7 trillion. So, US and other organizers already they are far ahead. But India, very first time, as you know, uh, Bharat Vajshi mentioned, very first time there is a specific provision is there of the foreign trade policy that is enabling. Because to control and manage those business, you have to have some structures. And, you know, thanks that, you know, ICIC Bank, other private sectors, government organizations, they are working on it to managing those high volume shipments. The rise of this uh, single shipment from 5 lakh to 10 lakh, that is also there. 122 uh, dark media kendra has been organized and it will be working as a hub and spoke model. So they'll definitely work on this part and take this business and it is estimated that it, for the Indian SMEs and MSMEs, specific to that. USD $350 billion opportunity, e-commerce opportunity is there. 
yes we are not able to you know cope up with the opportunity but i feel that we'll be definitely reaching that potential it is as good as volume that actual our uh, actual uh, physical merchant exporting is there i if i consider there are you know two or three basic challenges of the regulatory side and the shipping side so regulatory side uh, the government have eased down the regulatory side and the shipping side and the monitoring side icic bank and other private organization and the banking structure they are working so it's like you know surender ji mentioned if there is a 500 shipments are there it is now very easy to monitor match and edps issue will not be there logistic partners are also there so doing international business it's really going to be very a uh, good and opportunity for the indian smes and msms okay so what do you feel why we cannot compete with the usa or with the china and why they are so you can say so we are so much behind for that So, have any challenges are there or something is there or targeted we cannot identify the proper target market yet yeah, there are multiple other challenges anyway we are growing economy so we are coming to challenges lekin yeah. main point is what you feel uh, uh, why we wish wish we are not picking up basically i think indian smes they were not prepared and they were not aware about oh, the opportunities yes. i think this is a major aspect Yeah, and thanks right. to that, you know, uh, ICIC Bank that you know we are conducting on and on every you know every week there is a one program on e-commerce exports. Okay. So they are empowering and enabling and you know sharing the informations of the you know coming opportunities. Okay, so if SMEs are aware about the opportunity, def definitely they will explore it. If we consider about the, you know just an opportunity, every five to ten seconds there is an imitation jewelry is being sold. every 2 minutes there is some other products is being sold every 5 minutes some sports good is being sold on the platform okay. now if people are you know aware of it they will definitely go for the business okay. and as you know indian business owner they you know peculiar quality if we call if we consider as a jugadu or whatever but once they identify the opportunity they will definitely grab it but they are not aware about the opportunity what you are talking yes. about so yes these are the you know uh, platforms and awareness programs if you know oh. making them aware about if government have identified the you know uh, a district hub to you know channelizing the particular products to take it forward now sir with the government had told every district should be one product or something like that they have come out very clearly and there are so many organizations uh, they are helping the sme sector or other sector also right i think uh, awareness uh, you feel what is awareness pass i think in each and every time whenever i'm meeting one to one or many of the smes or msmes okay. they are really not aware about that there is a specific provision is also there and this much of opportunities are there so okay. disseminating of the information i think the awareness part is the major lacking of you know they are not able to tap the challenge tap the opportunity so beside the awareness any other point is there that we are not uh, knowing the about the our target group we are right platform we are not aware and optimize size of the experience or something like that is also there there are multiple thing that you know it is correlated with the right platform we are not able to you know package the uh, right pricing so for example if my product is i have listed the product but if i mentioned that the my product is free delivery then definitely there are you know possibilities of buying that particular product packing and packaging is also there so indian smes and msme need to learn about the aspect of the selling the product on e-commerce there are some of the statistics that if you are you know doing some i mean this kind of you know arrangements on, on your e-commerce platform then definitely there is a definitely push of this for example that you know if they feel that you know uh, shipping and delivery would be within 24 hours the buying percentage will be definitely increased and many other aspects are there that you know they also need some updates and everything so buying experience is more important in the e-commerce platform okay so if indian exporters and you know msme exporters they are able to create the good buying experience for example your shipment is booked your shipment is dispatched your shipment is on way and so on so forth those kind of updates and many other elements related to e-commerce and 
if they implement those aspect of the their buying experience definitely the buying ratio will be increased the buying percentage will be definitely increased they need to adapt the technology as well they need to place and market their product with the good photographs and everything so those are the learning experiences there and amazon other platform they are you know really also helping and empowering indian smes there are various other programs parallel going to that side okay what about the quality standard and certifications anything uh, you have view on that yes definitely we need to work on this and quality it's not only about the product quality it's all about the and i believe quality it's all about the entire buying experience is a quality right from the clicking of the product to delivery of the product and when i open the product packing and packaging it is also part of the quality you are yeah, right you are right excellent at That's the end of the process yeah. is there is any uh, feedback is there that what your product you liking it this is i consider as a quality in international business perspective right sir right so if we have the different perspective of the quality and if you are able to match it with that definitely okay. there and we need to work hard on you know creating our own benchmarks important but i think uh, you are touch a proper proper way we what quality other thing should be maintained and uh, what our target uh, market it or what of the right platform I, I i observed that just adding a one point that we really don't uh, differentiate with the packing and packaging you are right you are right this is also a important issue <laughs> so uh, if we focus equally on the packaging side as well very you know very uh, innovative aspect is that barbie doll they really less advertise for their their product but product is been sold just on the packaging aspect so these are the all experience if we put in our product not limiting to packing that you know safety of the product from point a point to b okay. but the buying experience and packaging is also there then the attachment with the brand will be definitely there then the reselling then the you will definitely get a good and positive reviews as well so if we consider the online platform you should have the good experience and people will generously and they choose to give you a good rating a good positive feedback and that will increase so it is also a statistic that if there is a good positive feedback of your product there is also a high chance of you know getting your business or getting the product to be sold mm -hmm. right yeah right very important what you are talking about the brand image uh, what about the brand image that is also important aspect is that yes, a... very true hey eh? right <laughs> so brand image it's not about you know being a bigger thing brand image is about you know trusting and if i am you know, trusting something and are they delivering the same thing okay and brand image it's over a period of time you need to build it if we consider that you and know what is your solution to sme sector i think you are expert for msc i mean yes have please. a solution to because some sme people are also in this webinar yes please the entrepreneur is there they are also interested for the e-commerce right uh, business have any solution on the to these entrepreneurs sir yes definitely i can share my uh, some of the experience first uh, don't wait just you know jump into this opportunity right it's like you know something is in a head that i am not ready so okay. don't feel that take a task that you know every week one task to be done one the platform should be done photograph should be done and then create the platform learn something your own self invest in technology and explore something and it is a very long way to go so don't feel that if something is then the perfection there is no perfect perfection is a myth and believe in yourself and it's a ongoing process that it's a learning that you do it and you can you know revive it believe in yourself yes i think this is a most mantra which you are giving to our entrepreneur and uh, any other aspect uh, what you're suggesting to them it's like you know uh, also invest in yourself in the terms of training and also push your team member to invest in the training part as well okay because i believe that uh, business is a sports it's a team sports so you should be strengthened and the team should be equally strengthened then and then you can scale the business all right very, very important so i will come back to you mr anand now mr rai is available sir our guest of honor mr ssp rai 
आई थिंक राय सर अनम्यूट कीजिए ना सर वी आर वेटिंग फ्रॉम दिगनिंग सर मिस्टर राय तो देखो यार उसको राजन सी टू मिस्टर राय वेर राय देयर अशोक मिश्रा जी जनरल सेक्रेटरी ऑफ दोसिएशन इज वेरी एक्सपीरियंस मिस्टर अशोक मिश्रा इज अवर एसोसिएशन जनरल सेक्रेटरी ऑफ एसोसिएशन थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर एक्सपेरिंग योर टाइम थैंक यू मिस्टर गुप्ता Uh, it's a no, pleasure to just, be yeah, here just, i think we have given you very important aspect which i want to ask from you you are a banker seasonal financial consultant sir for our export for our e-commerce business what are the challenges being faced by the our entrepreneur have any solution for that sir Mr. yeah sir, i have sir. a couple of them yeah thank you sir, thank you sir, mr sir, gupta sir thank you sir and the Yeah, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Sergeant <laughs> India, AFI, and uh, all others for giving me this opportunity. Now, uh, the topic given is uh, cross-border e-commerce. That basically would mean that exports. In e-commerce, there are certain points which, within the limited time, I have jotted down. From a general point of view, I am not getting into technicalities. so whether it's an entrepreneur whether in the sme segment or in the large segment uh this is one upcoming area the prospects of which as the time passes year upon year it would be growing exponentially observation number 1 if you observe the e-commerce the time to profit is substantial point number 1 time to profit is substantial i'll just quote some in fact i had uh, arranged a ppt but i was told by mr rajan that uh, it's fine if i speak so i would prefer speaking now because uh, right now i cannot project the ppt we talk about amazon india okay the largest company uh, in india of course flipkart is supposed to be the largest we talk about amazon india which is uh, an ex- uh, an uh, example to the whole world on how e-commerce can function am i right mr gupta hello yes you are right sir it was established in 2030 note this because in fact main yaar webinar mein hu aa jaiye aap log so it was established in 2013 amazon india and the revenues in 2022 fine financial year was 21000 crores approximately which rose to 22000 crores in 2023 profits during the two uh, years was 3600 crores and 4800 crores loss for the years that is amazon india amazon when we talk about the amazon proper us uh, the revenues have increased from 513 billion to 554 billion whereas the loss which was in last fiscal loss of 2000 2.7 billion dollars it has become now a profit of 20 billion dollars for the first time for the first time remember 1994 i think there were a year or two where i mean they made some profit but for the first time 1994 this is the profit which was made the first year uh, in the uh, year 2000 ending 2023 flipkart which was established in 2007 has increased its sales from 51000 crores to 56000 crores but its losses have increased from 3400 crores to 4800 crores alibaba which is basically a b2b organization 1999 it is in profits snap deal is in loss make my trip is in profits myntra is in loss which is now a part of but they are i mean part of flipkart but they are operating independently the point i wanted to make here was that e-commerce establishments in so far as cross border business is concerned take a lot of time to make profits so there has to be a staying power and allotments i mean uh, they have to have the 
ability to arrange for investments to stand them till they turn around and make profit business. The other part is that if you observe what is important in the revenue streams is their ancillary revenue streams. That is a very important factor. See, here, Amazon has a customer base of 310 million. Flipkart, 350 million. So this is a treasure. So in order to convert and turn around and make profits, you have to utilize this customer base. Amazon, for instance, I'll just quickly say what ancillary business they have. They have Amazon Web Services, which contributes almost 70% of the profit last year. Third-party retail seller, sellers, they collect money from the retail sellers. Amazon Pay Services, Firestick, Alexa, Kindle, Prime Video and Music, Pay Later, Credit Card, Amazon Advantage, that is selling books. If I want to sell books, I can approach them and they will. So all this ancillary business adds to their revenue streams. So point number one is there is time which is taken to make profit. The units which enter into cross-border e-commerce have to have the staying power and arrange adequate investments and capital to wait till the turnaround is made. Number two, logistics. Logistics, when you talk about, we have two choices, either to export whatever Durables are there. I'm talking about B2C. So somebody, let's say, sitting in Dubai is indenting from my website or from my app a particular material, whether I export it. Mostly, a major part of the uh, durables and the uh, items which are exported, a major fraction of it are smaller in number. They are not heavy machinery or equipments. They are uh, of less value. So what do we do? There is a problem here. There is a challenge here, whether we can export through postal services or courier services, or will it be because the larger organizations, they have their own warehouse in whichever country they are, like Amazon has a warehouse here. Similarly, if our organizations, whoever wants to do, normally should adopt this particular model. They can have their model of exports. That is okay, but in order to make it more profitable, in order to make the deliveries faster, in order to make less and simpler paperwork, the particular organizations have to have a warehouse in the target country. I don't say that you will have it, I mean, a warehouse in all the countries, but at least the major target countries must have a warehouse from where local dispatches can be made upon indenting. And these uh, countries must have a website or an app which is in terms of their own language, quoting their own currency. This is the challenge that when we talk in terms of logistics and cross-border e-commerce, that we have to target certain countries wherein in bulk of, like today, the I mean, the uh, choice of the country is US. 70% of the, as per the statistics, 70% of the units want to export to the US. So in that case, if I am to export and I'm targeting that country or let us say Dubai or London, that one must have a warehouse, small or large, so that upon indenting, the material can be dispatched from the local warehouse to the particular consumer who has indented for the particular year. And then the website has to be accordingly made that the uh, it highlights uh, the cultural uh, i mean it 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 leverages the the consumer practices it uh, is in terms of their own language supposing it is spain it has to be in spanish uh, and uh, in, supposing it is in france it has to be in terms of euro if it is in london it has to be in their own currency so that is also important challenge number 3 would be so this is the second challenge that wherever you want to target. You cannot target the whole world. It's going to be very difficult. So, uh, of course, unless that is one-to-one, -one, uh, I mean, uh, an export which is on LCs and SWIFT transfer of uh, money by through SWIFT. But if it is going to be e-commerce on a platform, then you have to have a warehouse there if you really want to target and expand your business. 
China is an example for us, and it is the biggest, I mean, uh, force which is offering a competition to most of the people. That is, I, I that is a challenge because it is said that seventy percent of all competition comes from China in e-commerce, cross-border e-commerce, and one fourth of all pro manufactured products emanate and originate from China. How is this possible? Probably uh, we cannot help the situation, but face them. Its share in the global exports in the year ending 2022 was 14.4%. Their scale of operations, their infrastructure, their cheap labor, their cheap postage and delivery cost, all these contribute to their success. So what, does, uh, what do the Indian uh, entrepreneurs do who are uh, looking for cross-border e-commerce? We can, I mean, I'll take the example of Apple at Redmi. Redmi gives it cheap. Uh, unfortunately, in India, that is the uh, highest selling uh, mobile phone. But in the US and the North America, Apple sells, even if Redmi is a cheaper alternative because of better quality. This is the lesson we have to learn. That when it comes to competitors like China, who are formidable forces in the cross-border e-commerce, we could focus on the quality. So challenge number three is facing the competition and better quality can ensure that. We, it has to be better quality instead of en masse going for uh, volumes. We can do that also, but better quality would be a better idea. Other area is challenge which would come. There are many points to be covered, but then I would focus on a couple of points is that frauds are on the rise and we have to be on the lookout to avoid frauds. In the darkness of the uh, web, Today, we have a major part of the cross-border business which is happening where the packets are, uh, you know, less than five kilo packets are uh, exported. Uh, it is subject to a lot of scrutiny, but the scrutiny is selective. They cannot, let us say that into the European Union, the, the daily, there are some million, uh, you know, packets which are entering out of which they can maximum with the available manpower and with the skilled manpower, it is not a mechanized process, the customs duty, they can open a few thousand packets. So today this has become a haven for people and criminals who are trafficking drugs, trafficking prohibited contraband stuff. And uh, one has to be very careful about this. If one is caught, then you get blacklisted and the risk is very dangerous. There are fake products Fraud is becoming a big problem where you have to be, there's a big challenge where the entrepreneurs who are going into this area have to be careful. Uh, there are chargebacks also. Chargeback is another area where people claim they have not received uh, the particular product. And chargebacks, they claim the chargeback, that's why you have exported something and you are not getting the money because uh, the, the payment is made through a credit card and there's a chargeback. Uh, there are stolen credit cards. People are there with stolen credit cards today. Uh, there are uh, drugs and e-cigarettes trafficking. There are fake products. There are identity theft. So all these are there. The solution should be that one online verification, that is OTP, which normally or two-factor authentication, data collection about the name, age, IP, email address, address verification. Address verification is normally done by your partners who are there, I mean, uh, there are many uh, uh, agencies, you have to engage them, reputed agencies in that country. Then there are softwares also like risk so, field and SIF. So join the webinar for webinar. Possible hack, yeah, sir. Good, good. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Gupta. Is, sorry, sorry for that. No, no, perfectly okay. Is Mr. Rai right. coming? So, please, you have completed or you just want to say something more? No, I'm sorry. I think you have broken. I was halfway. So, one was talking in terms of fraud prevention. I will just come to the last point which I want to make. There are many other points which uh, okay. I'm circumventing. 
there is the, the need for the website, which uh, is uh, detailed, but uh, it would take time, which probably we would better keep it aside because these are uh, mostly generic issues. But uh, that is very important. A website is much necessary. Things like cash on delivery, cart abandonment, uh, do it yourself, unboxing, speed, and then the uh, the ease of going through navigating through your website. They are important. You must have an app also. I'm talking uh, if the the you know today uh, the conversion rate is somewhere between two to three percent. Conversion rate means the people those who are surfing the net for a particular product they touch and go, and only two to three percent is converted. In order to increase the conversion rate, uh, an app is advisable. So you have to have an app also. Now the other challenge which I want to highlight is that in the process of cross-border e-commerce you have to have a lot of business partners. For example, shipping and haulers, such as ShipStation and Shippo. You have to have, I mean, uh, take the help of these uh, shipping and haulers to transport your uh, uh, material which are intended from one destination to another. Logistic management uh, agencies such as Transifex and Smartling, they look after the entire supply chain management they do the sorting, the labeling, the packaging, fragile labeling, the tracking, which are all necessary parts of cross-border e-commerce. Address verification is very important. Otherwise, you know, normally these uh, logistic management people do the address verification. They look after the custom stacks and in terms also. So the other partners are the delivery partners. Delivery partners are very important because there are two interfaces which happens between a customer and the e-commerce organization. One is the website or the app. Secondly, the delivery agent. So you build your image through the delivery agents. And unless they are proper, the delivery agents not only handle the delivery, they handle the warehousing, they handle the returns, the cash and delivery. Once cash and delivery is made, a lot of people, particularly in the third world, prefer cash on delivery because they want to see and feel the goods they want. After that, they pay. And then thirdly, the marketing. So these are the partners, the marketing partners. So they gather the market intelligence competition. Marketing is supposed to be the biggest challenge faced by all of the people. I mean, the entrepreneurs in India who are going into this area. So you have to engage marketing agencies who are there to provide you with in those target countries with market intelligence. They help you in the competition study, in uh, the language translation, in uh, the currency, in the cultural advertisement, I mean, you have, uh, you know, this uh, a lot of uh, offers which are there, which, uh, you know, you have the festive offers. Supposing we have Diwali and there is somebody who is dealing with dry fruits. Now, I think throughout the year, whatever sales of the dry fruits are, during Diwali, it would be peaking. So if you must know if somebody wants to export materials into India, I'm just giving an example. He must know that during Diwali, dry foods will be in demand. How do you know it? So you must, in order to understand the habits, the purchase habits, uh, the level of competition, uh, the cultural practices, you have to have some market intelligence and therefore a marketing partner uh, in the target countries is a necessary uh, agent. And that is another challenge to to select them and to appoint them after verifying the credentials. So these are some uh, of the challenges which uh, normally a person is supposed to uh, face. And there is one uh, government initiative which I would like to, before I conclude, is the ONDC. That is Open Network for Digital Commerce. We have not probably mentioned about it. It is something which is uh, getting together a potential buyer and all the retailers and the wholesalers who are there along with their credit rating, credit history. It has just started. And that means today, if I want to purchase something, I go to ONDC site. And the moment I click that this is the material I want to purchase, the list of the wholesalers and the retailers will come. So on the other hand, the entrepreneurs can enlist themselves in ONDC, which is free for the buyer, but with a very paltry sum, small sum of uh, fees which are payable. Uh, by the entrepreneurs so they can enlist themselves and this would help them in their marketing.
this is the few points I wanted to touch. Thank you, Mr. Gupta. If any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sir. I uh, think you have touched very rightly. Local warehousing you are talking about. You are talking about the quality. You are talking about the delivery partners. I think these are the important aspects. You also mentioned ONDC. ONDC play a very important role for the e-commerce also. What we are feeling it, legal aspect, even for a culture, for a logistical and technological issues are also very important for the e-commerce. So I think uh, in nutshell, we try to touch what the challenges, what are the opportunities for the e-commerce, for our entrepreneurs who are listening to us. And I think they can be use this technology for increase of their business. Lastly, I'm coming to Sridhar Bhartwar sir. Bhartwar sir, have any lastly advised to our participant sir lastly any few word at the end which you can give advice to our entrepreneurs mr bhatwaj yes sir thank you so much so uh, while we are talking about the uh, various aspects in the uh, government support that they are giving uh, to uh, the entrepreneurs for increase of e-commerce business my focus would be more on the uh, conclusion part of your transaction from the banking aspect, I would tell. See, what happens is you've done an export, you've got the payment. I say the thing gets settled for you as far as business is concerned. But as far as banking norms are concerned, as far as RBI guidelines are concerned, uh, unless and until your payment gets settled and your shipping bill gets regularized, it will show as reflecting in the regulator's point of view as well as in banking uh, data and that's where the bank starts following up and considering the uh, requirement of getting the shipping will regularize i have seen a lot of cases wherein the the exporters are not aware at all that the shipping bill has to be regularized earlier when they were physical the shipping bills they were not reflecting but as of now when the rbi has an edpms software all the shipping bills are reflecting in the system so as and when you are doing any exports to the courier company the data get flown through the customs to the edpms software so make sure that the payments are received and the shipping bill gets regularized as far as your transaction completion is there from the regulator's point of view Yes, the GFT as of now is working with RBA also to see because this particular segment requires a lot of issues regarding to payments. Since the payments are coming through OPGS fees, there is the uh, issue with regarding to the name of the remitter or the amount getting uh, less realized because the aggregator or the OPGS fee company asking debiting charges when the net proceed gets realized. And that affects your realization also. Uh, the, getting the bank relation certificate get generated for smaller amount. So make sure the compliance part is also handled properly to get your transactions completed so that uh, while you're sourcing the business, you're taking uh, your business to a new heights, the compliance also should not get affected. It should also be regularized from time to time. And I think that's it. That's the advice from me as a banker to the interpreter. Thank you, Mr. Bhartwaj. So I'm coming to Mr. Anand. Anand, do you have any advice to our uh, participants sir? No, as you know, uh, I feel that there is a challenge and there is an opportunity. It's hand to hand. So as uh, sir rightly mentioned that, you know, regarding some challenges related to the competition with respect to China, if we focus on the quality products and the entire business experience is there, definitely there is a potential for the Indian SMEs and MSMEs. Okay. Very nice. So, any of Mishra ji, Ashok Mishra, Mr. Sir, yeah, have, any, yeah, have, any, have a, lastly have any advice? There is one question also. If you can reply, we have done a lot of export in retail format, but we have done it through FPO. That FPO data is not uh, flowing. How do you solve this problem? Have any idea? Uh -huh. I'll reply as a banker. Uh, in this, a, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll reply this. 
so okay. as of now the shipping bills from the customs and the courier shipping bills are only flowing through the edpms the postal bill of exports are not flowing into edpms rbi is working on it and definitely they'll come up with this idea of getting this flow to edpms now so as of now if you have the postal bill of exports you can submit those documents to the banker along with the payment details and they will handle uh, the document and close the shipping bill so that your uh, bank relation certificate gets generated so as of now postal bill of exports are not flowing into the edpms software but they will definitely uh, sooner or later uh, as far as uh, when the rbi comes up with the uh, non profit Okay, thank you, thank you, Barbaji. Now I'm coming to Ashok Mishra. Lastly, few words, sir. As a general secretary of the association, you want to say <laughs> something? I I wish to thank everybody and also to you and uh, the organizers because this is a very relevant subject. And in the days to come, if India is to do well in the export front, we are net export importers of oil and will keep on uh, on importing oil. And in order to uh, pay for that, we have to have exports. because we need uh, export earnings because a major part of our uh, earnings today happens to be the flow of uh, the remittances made by the nris so uh, the exports have to be beefed up and the trade uh, deficit has to be bridged uh, we are looking at a time when we have trade surplus and in order that uh, this happens cross border e-commerce is something which is the order of the day uh the entrepreneurs have to be encouraged we have to increase the scale of operations and the ability of uh, the entrepreneurs to have access to capital which will stand them through the challenging years in the beginning when they turn around so uh, with these words uh, it has to be i would wish that we continue with a couple of more sessions because and we delimit the particular areas if at all there is participation by the entrepreneurs we could delimit into particular topics so that we can go deeper delve, delve deeper into it uh, i wish to thank everybody uh, for having contributed it was a learning experience thank you mr gupta if there is any specific question on the topics which i have covered i'll be happy to answer thank you very much thank you mr ji thank you all the eminent speakers this i am telling the association for power financial advisor of india promoted by the eminent financial expert and industry leaders of india who has joined hands together to establish a platform for exchange of knowledge and experiences for the benefit of our members besides that research in india who is a merchant banker and also investment banker is always at the disposal of the entrepreneur for preparing their draft project reports and protecting the technical economic viability we also syndicating the loans even our insolvency professional team is also helping the nclt beside that so at the end i have no word to express my gratitude toward our eminent speaker especially icici who has given confidence to us and i am thankful to shrinidha bhartwar sir who is a project manager of icic i am thankful to sir mr anand nirani sir i am thankful to sir ashok mishra ji who is financial consultant and also general secretary of the association of financial advisor of india i am also thankful to the off screen who is playing important role to conduct this webinars I am thankful to Mr. Rajan, Mr. Chaudhary, Mr. Lokesh, Mr. Devesis, Mr. Rohan, and his team, who all work hard so that this webinar can be successful. So, as I mentioned, more people are seeing on the YouTube also, electronic media also, and recordings are also available. in the youtube for this webinars or any other topic required by your members they can inform us by lastly i can request all the participants financial persons let they should join in associations give your membership to us so that it can give us a further certain 
to come up to your expectations. In this world, I'm thankful to you. I'm closing this session with the permissions, with your all permission for that. I'm also, uh, lastly, I am participants. I'm thankful to them for giving us always their blessing and their views. So I request you to please send your views also. I think we could not have any question. Lastly, somebody also sending it. Why not have a webinar how to reduce the import of the oil? We have somebody suggesting that way. Any advice for the gem and jewelry in a commerce business? What will be the role of the corporate debts in expansion and scaling of the commerce industry? Bhartwaji, you want to say something on this aspect? I think Mr. Anand wants to say something on that. Yeah. Anand, Anand, you want to say something, sir? Allah, lastly, they have put some questions. Yes. Uh, uh, with respect to gems and jewelry. Yes, sir. Right. So, if we design gems and jewelry with respect to India, then it is something different. But if we are, you know, thinking of taking to the e-commerce, then the perspective, design, style, weight, and everything need to be changed. Here it is a trend of, you know, 22 karat gold jewelry. But if we consider the European market, the gold jewelry is not there, maybe the platinum or the other color. And the 16 karat is more trendy, lighter jewelry. And that there is a different design is there. So if you are, you know, designing a jewelry, we need to consider the cultural aspect as well. So the jewelry is more appealing to the target audience. As you know, uh, Ms. Raji rightly mentioned that whenever you are, you know, selling a product, please consider about the cultural aspect of the them. And every five to 10 seconds, there is a imitation jewelry is being sold. So huge potential for Indian gems and jewelry business. But you yeah. just need to prepare yourself, leverage yourself and prepare a unique product considering the target markets. All USA, Europe and all these uh, developed countries are the target markets. Okay, nicely. So Mr. S.C. Agrawal is telling import or the import of oil that we should be having this webinar. Why not should have a webinar? We will try to do it. Uh, we are sure we are Agrawal, we will try to do it. Then Rajput is saying what will be the role of the corporate debts in expansion and scaling of a commerce industry. Vartava sir, you want to say something? Uh... Not sure of as to what I need to. Uh, I can you know, tell you see, because what will be the role of the corporate debts? Corporate debts is also helping all the commerce business. If in corporate uh, you are talking about the corporate, I think it can be helpful to them. If bank is a corporate debtor, they are also helping the all the entrepreneur for the export or something like that. I think yes, they... as of now, I think we have all start, started uh, giving this uh, export credit facilities to e-commerce customers yes, yes. also. Yeah, so well. that's a major step that has happened uh, with regarding to uh, supporting the industry. Everybody is supporting for that. Tell at the end, because uh, this question will come at the end. Like, I'm thankful to the people who are listening at least and uh, raising some points. If you can give me your feedback, I think that will be helpful to us further improve the webinars. For this webinar today, two persons, I could not have my uh, chief guest of that subject because he was busy somewhere. And uh, one person of the Amarji Chopra, who is past president of the institute, uh, because his father-in-law was not feeling well. He was in a critical position, so he was absent for that. So otherwise, we should have their views also. They are very eminent person. Again, like these three discussion was very good. All are thankful to them. If any suggestion for participants, please they write to us. Thank you very much. I am closing this session with thanks for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank, you, thank, you, everyone. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.